Perhaps this is me jumping the gun, but I'm going to take the leap forward and assume that choosing the right language, framework, or tech stack for your project can be quite challenging. I mean, there are so many options out there and different factors to consider. How do you balance between your project requirements and scalability, security, community support, and more? And it doesn't matter whether you're a beginner, intermediate, senior developer, a freelancer, or even a project manager. At the beginning of every project, the first headache and challenge you get is concerning choosing the right tech stack for that particular project. And trust me, it happens to every single one of us, and I can relate to that very much. I mean, just tonight, before I started recording this video, I was struggling with which language or framework to choose for a particular app I'm planning on building. Now, I've come up with a formula that works pretty well. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to be showing you how to choose the best framework or tech stacks for your project. Before we get started, here's a hack for you. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to get access to more video tips like this. Now, as I've mentioned before, we'll basically be discussing on front-end, back-end, databases, mobile app, and desktop app. So, let's start with front-end. I don't usually start with which framework to choose outrightly, because here's a shocker. No matter the framework you choose, chances are you can build any type of web app with any framework, be it React, be it Vue, Angular, Svelte, Quick, Solid, Prehacks, anything. And if you check through YouTube or any other dev community or blogs, you're going to see different tutorials teaching you how to build the same thing or different things with a particular framework. So I start with different important questions, such as, do this particular web app need SEO, very good SEO capabilities? Does it need better performance? Do I need to have different rendering mode, such as server-side rendering, static site generation, etc.? Do I need a very good developer experience? Now, if the answer to all of this is yes, then definitely I'm going with a meta framework and not the core framework itself. Now, all frameworks have their meta framework. This is basically the norm in the web dev space now. So React has frameworks like Next.js, Vue has Noxt, Angular has Universal, Svelte has SvelteKit, Quick has QuickCity, Solid has SolidStat, etc. If I want to develop maybe a dashboard or an in-house app for a particular team of a company, or let's say I'm building a to-do app, for example, chances are I'm going to be more inclined to go with a core framework rather than with a meta framework, unless there is a specific or particular reason for me to choose otherwise. And let's say I'm building a app like a blog, my portfolio website, etc. Chances are I'm going to be more willing to go with a meta framework rather than a core framework. But that still doesn't solve the problem of which one to choose exactly. Now, here is what I do. Do I need a lot of libraries, UI libraries, templates, berating code, and don't want to do much or want to do much faster? Then... I'll probably go with React and maybe Vue.js. Now, the reason for this is you'll probably find more options for libraries when you're working with something like React rather than compared with something like maybe Solid or Svelte because they have been much more around longer and they have lots of libraries that have been written to work around this particular ecosystem, to work around this particular framework. And now, I'm not dissing on Angular yet, but I would never willingly choose Angular unless a particular client or company requests or requires Angular. This is mainly because of the fact that working with Angular can be so much more complex. Like, for example, to create a component in Angular, I will have to basically work with like four different files, which is different from working with just one file for one component in other frameworks. Now, while Angular has made lots of efforts to make things easier, with their amazing CLI tool. And by basically giving you all the tools that you'd need, I mean, Angular is probably the most batteries included feature pack front end framework I've ever seen. Still, things could get real complex real fast. And one other rule of thumb, don't ever use Flutter or React Native for web development. Not that you can't, but I would advise you, you shouldn't. And for a couple of good reasons. Number one, using React Native 
for web or Flutter for web development is not the norm. It's not the standard. And this framework's primary purposes were for mobile app development, not for web development. And when I also tried building web app with Flutter and React Native for web, they essentially worked fine. And my reactions were like, wow, that's nice. But I wasn't particularly too impressed. And why you might get it to work and the web app would work perfectly fine. There is poor support for things like SEO, etc. Their strong point is in mobile app development and we'll get to that later on. Now, moving on, do you need faster performance? Then go with the newer kids in the block like Svelte, Solid, Quake. Now, one thing to note here is basically all front-end frameworks which we have, as far as I know, are fast. So fast that you can use them to build whatever it is you want and the user doesn't even care or wouldn't even notice what framework it was built with. But it's worth noting that there are some frameworks that put the e out too fast and make things actually faster. Now, do you need amazing developer experience? Then go Go with Svelte. Ever since I've tried Svelte and Svelte Kit and I've built a couple of projects with them, honestly, they've won me over. And I believe that the developer experience is just so nice. Now, moving on to back end, this is where things get a little bit more complicated and mainly because there are different languages that you can basically use for your back end web development. Unlike the front end where we know that you basically have to go with JavaScript, TypeScript, which is the standard. Now, here's what I do recommend. For most use cases, just use a language you are familiar with plus the best framework for that particular language. Now, when it comes to JavaScript or TypeScript, for familiar ecosystem, you can and use a runtime like Node.js and a framework like Express.js or Qua etc. But if you're looking for even better performance, you can make use of Deno as your runtime and any compatible framework of your choice. But for best lightning speed performance, then go with the newest kid on block, which is Born and maybe Elisa as your framework. And on a side note, Born 1.0 was released recently and it's just so amazing. Even I myself, I just had to install Born to do a particular project and I saw that it was just so dead simple to actually start with. Now, moving on, for Python, I would recommend Django. It has very fast speed and very fast development speed, plus it's batteries included. So basically have access to most of the things you need or everything you would need. Now for PHP, Go with Laravel, especially if you want to use its integration and its ecosystem for front end. Laravel ecosystem and its integration with front end is actually very pleasing to me. Plus, when you even install Laravel, create a new Laravel project, you can basically create a project, scaffold a project that uses Tailwind CSS by default. But using Tailwind CSS and something similar in Django, uh, requires a bit of extra step, which I really do not appreciate sometimes. I have to do some bit of setup and extra configuration to get them working together. Of course, it's also different when you're just using your framework to build APIs, which is going to be consumed by the front end. And let's be honest, this is basically the standard for web development nowadays. You have your back end separate, maybe built with different language or a particular framework. And then you have your front end in frameworks like React, Vue, Svelte, etc. And of course, it's now a whole new and different story. If on your back end, you need to run something like some machine learning algorithm, AI stores, etc. Then you might consider using, you guessed it, Python. So a framework like Django or Flask is definitely the way to go. And if you want something even faster and more efficient, then you can go with something like maybe Go or Rust. If you use Java, you can basically go with Spring or any other framework. For Ruby, just go with Ruby on Rails. Now, when it comes to database, for JavaScript or TypeScript applications, I usually consider NoSQL database like MongoDB first. But if I need larger database size, I consider using MySQL because most servers have better tier or plan for it. And it's just easier to get better bang for my buck and scale. Now, if I'm to build a mobile app or don't want to stress myself, I will try something like Firebase, Superbase, Pocketbase, and the other bases. Now, things are a little bit simpler when it comes to mobile app, unless there is a specific requirement to choose a native language and which 
I believe maybe to me, it doesn't happen as much. I'll probably pick a cross-platform or an hybrid framework. If you need to convert your previous web app code into a mobile app really quick with nice performance and you want your building, testing, debugging a bit easier, just go with Ionic or perhaps just bring in Capacitor into your web app and you can just start converting to make it look more mobile app-ish. Or perhaps you need better performance, you want to have a nice workflow to test on mobile devices or reuse JS logic or some libraries or you just love JavaScript or TypeScript and you're very good with it and React, then just go with React Native. And one other thing I really love about React Native is you basically have three ways to build your app and get your project started. While some might argue that that is actually a downside, you could also argue that it's not and it's actually helpful. But we basically have three different workflows in which you can choose in, in which you can opt in for depending on the need of your React Native app. I mean, we have the Expo Manage workflow, we have the Expo Ejected workflow, and then we have with the React native say hell high now one amazing thing with the expo managed workflow is even if you don't have maybe your android studio setup or maybe you're using a low-end pc like i was a couple of years back you can basically use Expo to test your app as you're building with the auto reloading and all of those stores, which is really cool if you ask me. But you can't do something like that with, let's say, Flutter. Now, if you still want to use any of your favorite front-end framework or JavaScript frameworks in your mobile app, but you need something with tendency to be faster, then basically go with native scripts. Now, if you need something with more customization or just want to stay away from all the JavaScript madness and ecosystem, then Flutter is your best bet. Now, when it comes to desktop applications, things even get much more simpler. Do you want to use your favorite web desk stacks without thinking too much? Then basically use Electron JS with maybe HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Or you can even use it with React. And this way you can reuse logic from your front end or your mobile app inside of your desktop app. Now, do you want a better performance and you love Flutter? Then go with Flutter. And on a side note, Flutter desktop apps actually perform better than Electron JS desktop apps. I mean, there's just a lot going on in the background of Electron JS that I just don't want to dive into that mess right now. Now, do you want the best performance? Yes, even better than Flutter's, but you still want to use your favorite front-end framework. Then go with Tauri, or perhaps you have a bit of experience with Rust. Still, go with Tauri. I believe that that's the best option and most performance option for building desktop apps at the moment. So that's basically all for now. If there's any other parts you'd like me to cover, like artificial intelligence, machine learning, Web3, etc., leave a comment down below. And also, if you disagree with any of these or you have some more insight, I'll be looking forward to your comments. And before you go, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. Thank you, and I'm going to see you in the next one.